All right, I think it's working. We don't have a chat yet, so hang in there. I need, I need a new, a new laptop, laptop to do to this, this so that I don't, I don't <laughs> look like I have no clue what I'm doing, doing most of the time. time. All, right, All right, looks like we're on. on. Yay. Yay. Okay. okay. We are. Yeah, I had to I move from my, from my computer, computer back over here to my laptop. laptop. So, so all righty. Um, can I see joy in the chat? Sarah's been borrowing my my, my uh, iPad, so she may have it set so it doesn't turn for me. Anyway, anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. There is an echo. Okay. Um, is there still an echo? Oops, I was texting the wrong person. Um, I have an echo. Is it, now, is the echo improved? I know. I'm, I know it's echoey. So, I, I need just one person. Just If Joy can just respond um, so that I can get this straightened out. How about now? Is there an echo? Well, sound is good how oh, it was before. Okay. If just Joy can let me know if the sound is better, it it seems to vary what buttons I need to push. But because of the delay, I click some more buttons, and I may have messed it up again. So, um. If I could find out if the sound is still okay. Now the echo is back. Oh, but this delay, I don't know which one it was. Um, oh, wait a sec. You guys have no idea when there's a minute delay from when I say something until it gets a response. Okay, I'm going to try this again. All right. If you could say button B is working, that would help me to know which one is working correctly. I know it sounds like I'm in a canyon, but the, the delay thing for years has been frustrating. Okay, so now we're on the sound. So if I have that one off and that one on, that works with this camera. And then when we switch cameras, we have to switch it all over again. I just love it. Oh, so much fun. Anyway, all right. First off, I apologize for not having class Friday, but with my cat getting into a, a tussle or a altercation is what Trevor called it, with we're not sure what. We don't think it was a cat because we heard nothing. He was only out for about an hour and a half that morning. He's giving me a glare from across the room. Um, we don't think it was a cat because usually when cats fight, they are loud. We think he may have cornered a possum because we've had possums in our backyard um, several times before. And it strikes me as that would be something that wouldn't be as noisy. He has several spots of missing hair. He has several places where they ended up shaving. He didn't have to have any stitches or anything. But he is on antibiotics. And if you've ever given medicine to a cat in liquid form, he doesn't like it. <laughs> so tough. He's getting it anyway. But I just keep telling him, you know, shouldn't have brought in all those snakes all summer long. So, um, he's staying indoors now for a while. <laughs> so, but anyway, that messed up my day because we left at a little after 10 to go to the emergency vet because our vet couldn't get him in until this weekend, but suggested we go to the emergency vet. 
And we finally got home about 5.30, so that messed up my entire day. No, that was on Thursday. That was on Thursday. So, But I lost all day Thursday, which I needed to get stuff done for Friday. So, hence we are here on Sunday. So, and we'll see how this, this goes um, today with this. Now, um, there was a question as to what, uh, over on Paper Doodles, as to what this was all about. Um, over the summer, a couple of times I had posted from my watercolor journal some some uh, watercolor uh, journal pages that I had done. People had multiple requests for wanting to be able to do that. So, perfect. I thought this is a great way to kind of ease back into doing shows, um, live shows again, because I've been off the air. There's a whole video about why, and I'm not going to go over it here, but there's a whole video on to why over on Paper Doodles. And, um, <coughs> which is my Facebook group, for those of you who don't know. Um, it's a private group. If you ask to join, um, Joy and I are moderators on it, and we can let you in. Um, anyway, that's why we're doing this. This is not because it's going to become part of any other project. It's just people ask to, how to do the watercolor stuff. Now, to qualify that. I am by no means an expert or a professional watercolorist. This is how I do it. I learned how to watercolor way back in the early 1980s, so it's been, you know, close to 40 years. Um, and off and on over those years, I've watercolored at times. Um, again, I'm not an expert. I don't do it on a daily basis. I don't, you know, I do it when I need to. It's something that I have the materials for. We did a whole video last week um, that's up here on YouTube that goes over all the different materials um, that I use. Now, I am using something a little bit different than when we switch cameras, I'll explain. Um, but one request that I do have, uh, again, I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional. Some of you have may probably watercolored even more than I have some of those people watching. I do ask that, not, that I'm showing how I do it. Whether it's the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it, or whatever, that's fine. It's how I do it, and that's all I'm showing here. So please don't email me, comment, or leave me messages that I'm doing things completely wrong and different than you do. I've told people, if you want to know the absolute right way to do it, there's hundreds and thousands probably of YouTube videos showing the proper ways to do watercolor. I'm just showing you how I do it. It works for me. And that's what people ask for. So that's just where I am. Um, we are going to be doing a carousel horse today. 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 <laughs> today. I'm planning on it being a series, but I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes um, today. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you is how to take a drawing and transfer it in, transferring it onto the watercolor paper and we'll start painting. Now, I think the thing that I found that hung, hangs up the people the most in terms of doing some watercolor is they feel like they can't draw. So by creating these drawings that you that are available over on my shop, I, I'm just charging a couple bucks for it. I've already heard um, that people expected it to be free, but you know, it's a couple bucks and it's just helping me um, to keep things going. So, um, but you can download it, you can enlarge it, shrink it, however you want to do it. Um, and then we'll transfer it onto watercolor paper and we're gonna paint. Now I have an idea of how I'm gonna turn it into a reverse canvas, um, but I don't have that ready to do just yet. And I'll show you that when I get to that point for those people who want to turn it into something um, 3D. For now, we're just doing a flat watercolor painting of the first horse. Um, and as I said, it's available over in my shop. You can download it and print it out. This is just printed out on regular um, copier type paper, printer paper. Um, and I'll, I'll go through the process of transferring that onto our watercolor paper and we can start painting. I do this just because I find it to be very relaxing. It's kind of like reading. It just kind of 
It's a very soothing, calming type of thing. And I'm sorry, in 2020 this year, anything that's soothing and calming is a good thing. <laughs> so um, it's been a crazy year um, on so many different fronts. Right now, here in Washington State, we had the governor announce this morning that we're going into um, some, some um, restrictions. We're not in full lockdown, but pretty darn close. A lot of people are whining about it. My thought is, if you'd have done it right the first time, wouldn't have this problem as bad this time. So I'm going to put in this plea. Please, please, please wear a mask. It's not a political statement. It's not an infringement on your constitutional rights. It's taking care of yourself. It's taking care of others. Um, and if you don't agree with that, you don't have to watch. You don't have to follow me on any of my social media. It's fine. But please wear a mask. I don't want to catch it. I don't want any of my family members to catch it. My mom catches it. She's 89. She has one kidney and high blood pressure. She won't survive it. And I'm coming to terms with that. But this is serious. This is real. Just wear a mask. Okay. Off my soapbox. And now we're going to watercolor. So if you're watching this three years from now, You'll know how this all turned out. But anyway, right now, we're a mess. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be playing with some watercolors. We're just going to have fun. We're going to forget the world out there exists for a couple hours. And the video will be here for you to watch in the future. So anyway, let me switch cameras. We're going to have to do a sound check again because just when I get it all figured out, they change things. So... <laughs> And I hate and I hate my laptop. I'm an Apple girl, and this is a window. So okay, let me switch this back and push that out of the way. Push this into the way. Okay, how is the sound? Any word on the sound? If just joy. The switch, the sound is good. If she just says sound is good, I'll be good. Sound is great. All right, so I don't have to switch sound on now. See, like I said, now in the past, I've had to change, do things, but something, you know, every time I swear, every time I log in, they've changed something, either on my broadcaster or on YouTube, and it's like, stop changing it. Just let me do this. So anyway, all right, so. What I am going to be using was something I didn't have, and I got stuff all over this, so hang on. Um, um, I didn't have one of these when I did my video because I had hadn't um, hadn't gotten it yet. Um, I got this from Amazon, and. They still have them. This is what is called a watercolor block. And with a watercolor block, you don't have to stretch. I showed in the last video how you can stretch paper onto a board or surface. With a watercolor block, it is um, bound, gum bound on all four edges. And so there's no side that the pages are loose. It's all bound. And what that does is it's going to hold the watercolor paper and leave it flat while you're painting. Then once you're done painting, um, we'll take an X-Acto and lift off the top sheet. And then it's so you don't have to dampen and stretch it and wait 24 hours, you're all good to go. Um, and these very, the, now the Stonehenge ones, it's a decent watercolor paper. It's not the world's greatest, but it's also relatively in, inexpensive. I think this one, was around 13 or 14 dollars if I recall correctly. You can get some really high quality uh, watercolor blocks that run in the 50 to 60 dollar range but for our purposes when you're just starting out you can go ahead and use the inexpensive stuff for this. Um, as you become more experienced if you want to pursue watercoloring further obviously you can upgrade. And if there's anything that I personally 
would say it's worth spending a little more on it's not so much the paint and such it's your paper because the paper can affect the quality of your finished product and again I, I personally I like the Stonehenge just as a cold press um, I like the Stonehenge paper it's um, perfectly great quality for what we're, we're doing um, we're not looking to do uh, professional grade watercolor that we're going to be selling in a gallery so this is going to work absolutely perfectly for us <coughs> excuse me um, All right. Sorry, just I have to I have to get my bifocals just right on my iPad to see the chat, and it's uh. And it's tiny because I can't get the thing to turn on me. So, anyway, all right. So to transfer onto either your watercolor block or your watercolor paper stretched, or if you're just gonna go right off of a pad and just be aware that it's gonna warp a little, um, but that's a choice that you can make. So to transfer it onto my either stretch paper or my block, I have a sheet of graphite transfer paper, which I showed you before. I don't, I think it's Sorrel. I don't know for sure, but this stuff has been around since time began just about. Um, and you can get this at, I, 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 my guess is Amazon has it, um, but you can also, um, Dick Blick for sure um, has it. And I recommend, I highly, always highly recommend um, Dick Blick. They have great, great products and great pricing. All right, so I'm going to use a sheet of that. And I'm going to place it down on my paper. And then I'm going to center this how I want to, whether it's high, low, in between. So I'm going to place that on there. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of painter's tape. And attach this on here lightly. I am going to be setting up a um, Amazon shop thingy to where um, I will be putting the products that I use because I'm not wanting to become a shop to where I'm carrying this kind of stuff um, in my own shop because then that also involves shipping which I'll house on thank you um, so I will be setting one of those up hopefully this week um, so for when you want to order some it doesn't affect the price that you pay but I get a little bit um, of an affiliate um, payment so it just kind of helps me to be able to do um, projects like that this but anyway so here's my horse and I've created a little background you may end up deciding you want to do a different background and so as a result don't trace that square off um, but I'm going to do a color there and leave the rest of the background um, in white so I've got this set on here I like to use a ballpoint pen to trace this on a you can see um, it's sharp enough um, and then you can also see where you have drawn in where you haven't um, best is if you have a col colored ballpoint but of course, do you think I could find a color ballpoint when I have 4,000 of them around somewhere? Um, but of course not. So, but two seconds, I think I suddenly just, my brain just went, oh wait, it's, it might be over there. one it was over at my other stand-up table it's a red one and that'll work even better perfect so that way you can really see um, as long as it keeps writing we're good um, that way you can see where you've traced and you don't want to put as you saw um, the graphite cans kind of smudge and we'll just use a, an eraser to kind of take some of that um, off so and you're just gonna trace over all the lines so this is a great way you can also use coloring book 
with all of the adult coloring, there's so many different images and stuff out there. Also, if you prefer, you don't want to do watercolor, you could use these images that I've, I have, I'm going to have available. You can do them out of color pencil, um, marker. You can kind of use them as adult coloring if you choose. So we're just going to go through. I debated as to whether to do this process on camera or do it in advance. And it was like, well, it's not that complex of a drawing. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. So I know it's kind of boring to sit and watch me do this, but... If I didn't, I'd have somebody emailing me asking me how to, how to do this. So, if you don't want to watch this, you can also go get a cup of tea or something. <laughs> But having it being in a different color, I can now totally see what I'm tracing. And then I can also see what I haven't traced yet. These are little tassels. And this graphite erases very easily with any number of kinds of um, erasers so you can erase it. Now this is much more of an illustration type of watercoloring method. Obviously there's much more organic and loose kinds um, and we're not going to do that for these series. Um, that requires you to um, probably have a little bit more practice. Um, and it tends to get a little frustrating for people, especially who people who have kind of brainwashed themselves into thinking they have no artistic ability or can't draw. Everybody has artistic ability just because maybe your abilities don't lend themselves to realism doesn't mean you can't draw, it just means you have a different style. I'm not a super big fan only because I'm not comfortable with it of doing just, you know, freehand type painting. <laughs> now my plan at this point is there to be a unicorn and a pegasus and probably a seahorse as well but I went with a regular carousel horse this first one just because there is um, potential that I just do more horses if you don't want to do those other ones And if you kind of miss a line, it's okay. Just go back over on the actual line because you can either leave it or you can um, erase the incorrect line. You don't have to press hard. You're just literally tracing over the lines on the base drawing.
Sometimes the texture of the watercolor paper below will um, kind of bounce you off the line, especially for pressing too hard. If you're not pressing that hard, it doesn't seem to impact it as much. But if you're you're pressing, which you don't need to do, it can cause a problem. Or maybe you're just like me and you're not as good at tracing as you used to be. Now I'm trying to go quickly just because I uh, want to get started on the good part with you guys. So. I'm working as fast as I can. Probably would take a little more time otherwise. But again, I'm just drawing over it. I'm not pressing. Because if I press, it kind of wants to kind of emboss the paper a bit. And we're not looking to do that. Now I will be going over some of these lines with a fine tip marker um, after I've painted. Peter's like, you closed the door and you locked me in here. You're going to have to let me out. I'm not happy. Okay, then before I untape it, I kind of want to go look over it and make sure I've got all the lines traced over. Just to check, I'm going to go ahead and keep my fingers holding it in place on one side while I take the tape off the other, just in case I have to put it back down when I lift it up. Uh, it looks like everything is there, so I can peel everything off. Now you can use this um, sheet of the transfer paper multiple times. You can see how it lightly, you can see how it takes it off, of, but you can definitely use these, um, these sheets multiple times. You can keep this out as reference. Um, the smudgy marks, I can take those off. This is what's called a kneaded eraser. It's kind of clay-like. But the beauty is you can get it, squeeze it down to just a nice little point to take some of the smudgy places off. And you're not going to want to go and brush it off. I, I have a wide brush that I many times don't, that I many times throw on my desk um, that I will use then to sweep away crumb places. Like here's a place where I need to erase where I double lined it. Now this came out nice and nice and dark and crisp, which is fine. As I said, I will be doing some over similar to what I did on this one, where you can see I did some fine. I've got my camera so it doesn't autofocus because otherwise it would pump, but I'm trying to find the right. But anyway, you can see where I've used some um, fine markers and some also a white marker adding some details and stuff and I've done that um, after it's painted so I'm not worrying about the pencil that's on there I can to lighten up some places if they're really dark I can just take this um, kneaded eraser and to kind of clean it up you just knead it up a little bit it's kind of like with bread and I can just press over the top and that if it's a little darker than you'd like it to be, 
and lighten it up a little bit. Yes, you can make your horse whatever color you want. I haven't decided yet where what color I'm using. But so if you just feel that your transfer graphite is a little dark, you just go over it with this and you just keep kneading this so it takes a, keeps it nice and clean. And that will lighten it up. There, so it's not quite so intense. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? And they do have these kneaded erasers at like Hobby Lobby. And I'm sure they have them on Amazon and I know for a fact they have them at uh, um, uh, Dick Blick. All right, now I have two things of water. One is my clean water and one is my wash water. If you want to have warm water, cold water, multiple kinds of water, that's your choice to do so. Um, and I missed a little line there. And a little line there. So add those in. Not so far, good, okay. About to run down and get a Dr. Pepper. So finishing that one off. Alrighty, so then we have to decide what color. I'm just gonna use just your oh, that's tropical something tropical something. I'm just gonna use some of these little primo um primo ones. Now this one is the classic, so it just gives you kind of a nice range um, of the colors. So it's got you know white, yellow, orange, red, pink, purple, blue, turquoise, green, brown, gray, black. Do everything all just with that one and mixing some colors. I also have this one that's com called Complexions, and it has shades of brown tones and a pink in case we want to make it a brown horse, which is kind of what I was thinking. But, you know, if you want to make it pink, purple, blue, whatever color, by all means, you can do that. We talked about um, having a palette. You can use the little palette that's on these guys. Totally fine to do. Um, but it's also nice having a little bit more palette space um, when you're painting. Now, I clean mine up every, every, after every time I use them. If you've seen um, some people who do watercolors on either Instagram or YouTube or something, and many times their palette parts and their watercolor things are a mess. And I just, I'm really weirdly anal about that kind of thing, is I like to clean it afterwards. I'm not really sure why. Um, now, I, I do recommend, and I'm just gonna use a little, before we guess, get started if you've never watered color before um let's play a little bit on just some blank watercolor paper and this is just a, a basic pad of Strathmore similar in quality of what we're using um, but it I recommend it just a little bit of warm-up playing with it um, maybe draw some squares or shapes um, just so you can practice painting a little bit on them before you're working on your project. But um, even if you mess one up, you've still got the, the original drawing. You can transfer it again onto another sheet and do it again if you don't like how it comes out. Now, just always remember, you're probably your own worst critic. Um, so, but I'm just going to take some water. Let's... I'm going to just go with a color that will show up on camera. Some orange so I can take it if I don't want it quite that bright. And we're just going to start painting 
a little square. Now your edges will all blend as long as it stays wet. Once it starts to dry, you're not gonna be able to blend the edges of your color. So if I put some out here, and then I let that dry, I can then take a different color. Let's go with the pink. I can go up right next to it. And it won't it won't bleed into it when it's dry. If I do that again with some more of the orange and it's still wet and then I take some of the pink and go right next to it, they're going to bleed. So dry you can keep a line, wet they're going to bleed together. So just remember that in terms of when you want to have kind of a blended look you can get that when the edges are wet to keep them defined have a dry edge you can also get some cool effects moving it around a little bit when it's still wet you can do all sorts of wild things like put, put salt on it all, all sorts of fun things all right so Let's go with some of this blue. Now when you're trying to fill in a larger area, you can start at the edge of it and keep a nice blob of paint. And then you're going to evenly pull down the paint across as you're painting it in and you're going to get a much more even. So don't go to one side and then go back to the other side of it. You're going to want to be working across it, pulling the water down. That way it's going to give you a nice even wash. Now if I want to have a more of a graduated wash, I'm going to start up here at the top I'm going to let a lot of ink into it. This is uh, this is going to be too much for this little triangle, but I'll go down beyond it. So I'll pull down just a little ways, going across. So pretend it's not a triangle. Wash my brush. Put some more water on it. Got to pull it down further than that. So I got a lot of water on there. So I'm pulling it down. See how it's getting lighter. Rinse my brush out, add some more water to it. And we can get much more of a wash type effect by pulling it down. So it starts out darker and then I'm pulling it down to get a wash. So I can get an even color by keeping my the paint in there the same, but by keep adding water as you're washing down, you can get that variated gradual um, kind of blend it down. Does that make sense? Now you can also play with mixing colors so you don't have to stay with just what's here. So, um, so let's add some more to this to the pink. A lot of times also I will use, let's see where's my little pipette. I will use what's called a pipette. It's kind of like an eyedropper. Get some clean water and I will at the start with cake watercolors which is personally I prefer a cake watercolor but that's just me. Some people would like the tube ones but I add some water 
And I'm also, I get really, really weirdly anal about, I don't like my paint pans to get mixed up with each other. So, um, this is how many times I'll add water. So if I've, I've got this pink going here, rather than sticking my, my, my brush in my clean water, I'll use this little pipette. And I didn't talk about this pipette last time, but I'll use that to add some water of my clean water. Before I dip into another color, again, I'm really weirdly anal about this stuff. I will take my, uh, wash my brush out. So maybe I'm going to add a little green, which is opposite on the color wheel for my pink, and it's going to tone it down so it's not quite so bright. Bright, It kind of muds it out. It'll give me a slightly, you know, a duller shade of pink. So don't be afraid to sit there and play and mix. It's always a good idea to have a scrap piece of watercolor paper or a little pad like this one to just kind of play around on. Now, one of the things that I run into frequently when I'm playing um, mixing with my, um, my colors is I will forget what all I put in there. So make sure if you're doing something that's got a larger scale to it, um, mix up enough of that color so that you don't run out of it. And I'm just going to blend all that stuff together. But um, you can get different techniques with wet and with dry. So you can start seeing where the edge is on that one. So I can now bring this color in kind of next to it. It will blend. Oh, it's not quite dry. I was wrong. It wasn't dry. So I can put it on this edge. And it will, to a certain extent, blend but not not the same as it does when it's wet so anyway quick yeah you just you need to let it dry many times or use your heat gun to dry it first and then move along from there so all right so we're just going to dive in let's not you know sometimes you can sit and and worry yourself absolutely silly do not become so married to this that you're like, oh, I'm so afraid to start. We're playing. If it doesn't work, you trace another one. It's not like you spent four hours drawing this and you have one. You can trace it again. We're using inexpensive watercolor paper. So just, you know, go for it. So let's go ahead. Okay, what color horse should I do? I'm grabbing my water. Drinking water, I should say. I'm thinking just, I don't know. You know, we could start with his fufa. Or we can just, maybe we'll start with the fufa. And then we'll come back and do his, um, whatever color. Now we can decide what color he wants to be. Hmm, hmm, hmm. My problem is I don't have a color scheme set in my head just yet. And I think I want to do the, uh, I don't know. I think I want to do the horse first, actually. Um, should we just do a, a, a kind of a basic brownish tone horse? Kind of a neutrally brown? Maybe pick one of them that's on here. Look at this guy right here, this cavern brown. Let's do that one. We're going to do this guy here. May I help you? Yeah, I didn't know you were Yeah, I'm doing a live show. Oh, my God. Okay, can I talk to you when you're done, though? Yep, I'll be done at about, what time is it right now? I'll be done at uh, 5.30. Anything? you need right now? No, I just want to talk to you about something. Okay. Um, Tigger probably wants out of here. That's why I was grabbing him. Okay, that's a bit of a large brush. Let me grab a smaller size brush. Go a little bit smaller when I work around his face. And I'm not going to add any color into it, so in case I only do part of it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd want to mix up enough to do his whole body. Even if it dries, you can re-wet it. 
So I'm just going to start paint in there. I want the paint out of this brush, but I don't necessarily want this brush. So. I'm such a miser. I'm terrible. And I'm just kind of filling in. If it gets a little mottled, that actually works for me. I don't mind it. Now, if it's a little dark before it dries, if it's if it's too dark for you and you're like, oh, that is way darker than I want, then you grab a little piece of paper towel and you sop some of it up. So then it's like, okay, well, there. It's more the color that I want it to be. Relatively even, it's cool. Okay, that's part of his bridle. So I'm gonna go to this section right here. You can always much easier add more color rather than take some away. So I added it to get a little bit darker. And I brought it down so it's darker down towards his neck where it would be more in shadow. So this is, you know, this is kind of paint by number to a certain extent compared to if we were doing it more freeform. And for when you're first starting out, great way to do it. If you don't like the carousel horses, obviously you can do um, a, uh, any kind of image you want, whether you draw it yourself, you use a, a, you know, some coloring book or an adult coloring or something like that. Just go right up to the edge, kind of bring it down to up there to his mouth, so you can see it. I've just filled in for the most part his head. Kind of one of those things though, once you've committed to one section that's all kind of one, you don't want to stop painting that section. So this whole head and neck area, I got to commit to that and not want to stop unless there's a good break point. Like here is the edge of his cheek. And I, if I want to emphasize that, I'm going to pull the color down towards that. So I want to emphasize his cheek maybe a little bit. So I can let that dry and then paint this section. So I can go back here if I want to add a little around his nostril thing there. To add, I'm just touching it right up against that nostril. Is there I give it a little bit more definition to his nostril? It's hard to see. And I can also add maybe a touch of a little tiny bit of black. Don't get over exuberant. Wipe it off if you need to. Okay, that didn't go the way I wanted it to, so then I can go beep, beep, beep. Erase it to him a little bit. You know, just don't panic about stuff. And then I can go back, add a little more of the brown on there. And you're none the wiser. So I need to let that dry before I put that dark on there. Maybe make it a little bit darker just with the brown. Okay, that's good. All right, so now I can go, even though it's only dried a little bit, but it'll help to define that that cheek area because I let it dry a little bit.
But when you're doing this, you kind of get focused in on what you're doing and you can kind of tune out, which is why I probably am not looking at the chat as much as I probably should. But it helps you kind of just tune out the world. And I think that's why I picked up my watercolor. Again, after not having done it for a very long time. But it's always nice to have tools in your toolbox. No matter what kind of crafting you do. You know, I can apply this. You know, I'm doing just kind of a classic type of watercolor painting right now, but you can also do um, do this kind of thing on tags or something like that for um, I'm going to let that dry because I want to get up against that, that cheek so but I like how I got it darker down here by where it's going to be shouted over by his name, so Doesn't have to be completely dry. It's dry-ish. Do some clean water. Kind of blend it in a little bit. Pull it down. So there, how? See how I then use the water down to just bring it down to where it's not adding more color to this section but it's given some definition by his cheek okay okay so then we're gonna okay that's his chest plate so this is a leg here Against one. You can pull the color around, and as you play with it, you can kind of see how you can kind of pull that color to where you want it to go. And I'm going to go on the other side of this little pom pom y thing. I guess it's more of a tassel. And I'm going to put some more color back behind there. And I want some color on this edge because that's in more of a shadowy area. So while it's still wet, adding the paint to right up against the edge. Maybe underneath a little bit. Draw it around. And then let it dry. The biggest thing with a watercolor, many times it's like, oh, I've got it shaded exactly how I want. Then don't touch it. We tend to fuss it over a little bit too much, but if it's exactly the way you want it, dry it. <laughs> and don't fuss with it further. You can add another layer over the top of it too, but, but don't keep fussing with it because then it just turns into um, all over the same color. Also when it dries, it dries differently than when it's wet, but you can still see it's got that shading in there. Biggest thing is, give your permission, self-permission that it doesn't have to be perfect the first time you play with this. But you'll find as you're, you are playing, you can really pull the color around to where you want it to go. Alright, so now we're going to go to this part. 
coming around my little tassels. And here's another one of those kind of a, well, not a separate section. It's he's got kind of that sh that line where his his elbow kind of goes. So I'm okay with painting it to that line. Pulling a little bit more color down there for his belly and along his shadow. We're going over to this side. Now, this one I'm going to pull in some more water because I want this to be lighter next to his other leg that's the same color. So I'm pulling in water to keep this edge light. That edge, I kind of want to blend that in a little bit. Some more paint down here and make him a little darker but keeping it light up there pulling the paint as you can see with the brush you can kind of pull your paint where you want it to go but see how it's then keeping that light along that edge where it's touching that leg it's giving some definition but it's also if the light were coming out in that way does that make sense If you don't get the subtle shading in here your first go around, the world will not end. There will be no watercolor police knocking at your door, screaming at you that you did it wrong. If you just have all over color, it's perfectly and completely fine. So I want everybody, I can't hear you, but I want you to repeat after me. It does not have to be perfect. Well, this is just the first go round. I'm kind of doing an overview. Um, in the future, if we want to do some stuff on shading and shadow and mixing and all that kind of stuff, we can do that. You can also observe other people's um, YouTube videos on it. Um, but I'm just kind of going over, I mean, I'm throwing a ton at you because <laughs> I'm just basically doing a complete overview. Well, I'm not, at least I'm not doing it like I did when my kids were in elementary school and I was art docenting. I would go in the every single class and make the kids say, I am an artist. So um, I'm not doing that to you at least. So Now there's one little spot right here that it's a very distinctive line that I don't necessarily want there. So I've just got water on my brush. And I can go in. Now this is where you want to be cautious because you can totally turn it into, even, make it worse. <laughs> so you want to be super subtle about it and dry it right away. Um, with just some water and kind of blend it a little bit, but you can also turn it into where it's a much more distinct line. 
Oh, I use the dryer all the time. Yeah. Waiting for water to dry is, is I'm not patient enough for that. A blow dryer um, can work in a pinch, but it tends to blow the air harder than, um, than a heat tool. Okay, so now I'm going to do this little part of his belly, and I want it darker along this edge and a little bit lighter down towards his belly. Now this first color, we're just doing a basic color. We're not doing any blending. We're not adding anything to it. We're just going with a basic color just to kind of get a feel for it. When we go to like his mane, I think we're going to do more of a mane and tail. I think we're going to do some kind of blending the color in. So here I'm just going to get the paint on. And then I'm going to pull it up. Pull it a little along the edge here. Pull it up more to where it's a little bit darker up there. Make it a little bit darker down here at his belly belly here. So there we've done it so it's a little darker up here and a little darker down there. It's subtle. Okay, now we're going to do his little boomy. Put the paint on there and then just slowly pull it somewhere along that line. See how when it's still watery, you can kind of push the paint around where you want it to go. But when you're having some color variation when you're pushing it around, just beware, you're mixing the color more and more when you're doing that. We're all on one color, so it's easy to push it around. What size brush? Uh, let's see. I didn't even look. This is a size 6 brush. This is just kind of a medium size. Um, when I first started I was on a 10. Um, my favorite one for my detail stuff is, this is a double lot. Um, I have this one set that has, this is a 5 and an 8. But um, this is probably the one I use the most and it's a 6. I'm going to do his back leg first because I want that to be darker. But again, and I'm going to repeat this multiple times during this whole thing, I am not, nor do I claim to be, an expert. There may be others. Well, there are definitely are others who do things differently than I do. I'm just showing you how I do it, what works for me. And I do highly recommend people um, do look at videos from others I'll look the yeah that's why these tiny little things go 
heck of a long ways. Um, it definitely does. A little bit of paint goes a very long way. So there I dropped him in nice and dark because that's it's in the back so I, I wanted to go recede so by doing that back light a little bit darker and then I'll do this one up here in the front and I'll do it a little bit lighter maybe add a little water to it so it does definitely get a little lighter Pull this, pull in, kind of pushing the paint where I want it to go as it slowly starts to dry. So if I want it lighter on that front edge. Now I'm going to dry this because guaranteed I will put my hand down for sure in that leg. So I'm going to dry it so that I don't put my hand in it and smear it. And see, this is where I don't have patience to just let it dry. So using the heat tool to dry it. And I think we're going to make him have a kind of a gray mane with some some blue tips on it. His mane and tail. Let's see, I want to rest my hand there, and if this was wet, I would smear it. Guaranteed. I know myself well. And the edge that you want to, to keep pulling down, you want to make sure it stays wet. So add some paint on it before you're ready to pull it down. A little shadowing down underneath there. Just think of where it might be a little bit darker. 
Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of a line going on right there, so I'm going to wet it down with just some water and blend it a little bit. And then I just have one little tiny spot still to do back by his little tushy tush. Okay, let's see. Any other spots? Once it's dry, and then you put some on there, you can kind of blend the edge with some clear water so that it just keeps that dark on the one edge that you where you want it. It's a little more than you wanted. Get your little paper towel thing there. So then, let's see if we go on a little bit more up here. Too much paper towel blob. So there I got the brown part pretty much done. Let's just let that get dry. Is this making sense to everybody so far? So, there you can see. Not perfect, but doesn't have to be. I think next what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and do his little black hooves and then we can start moving into some color so we'll stay with the, the blend for now. I'm going to add some paint to my gray here and my blue since I let those dry or some water not paint. Now this is probably a place where you might not want to go down. You might want to go down. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to go down to a little bit smaller brush. I'm going to go down to a three. draw paint from that one because I put way too much paint on there.
Put them on the black nicely. There, I know he's got little hooves. Does anybody have any questions so far? Do we want his saddle to be in blue or do we want his mane to be in blue? Because we can do his, his saddle in shades of blue and then his mane can be, maybe we can bring in some other color. I'm trying to kind of think of how I want him to look. I kind of like the idea of his saddle parts being in different blues and purples but I don't want to do pink then on his his tail and mane I'm just trying to think of since I'm not a horse person I don't really know what kind of colors but it you know it's a it's a carousel horse so he can be kind of any color we want him to be any suggestions on what color we should do his mane because then we'll do is we'll do I think I think the blues and purples and stuff, um, greens, blues and purples, so cool tones for his saddle and stuff. So I'm trying to think of what color we can do his tail and stuff. I don't want to do it blue as well. Lois of course wants it all blue. Lois can never get enough blue. But I kind of wanted to do kind of variegate his tail. I don't really necessarily want to. White's kind of harder to achieve for some people, so I don't really want to go super white. Oops, Lavender. That one might be kind of cool. Is we do it from gray into the kind of lavender violet, and then we can do blues and greens, and then it, so it all kind of ties together. Because I don't want to do like you know blue and pink. So good idea, Jane. I like that. Let me get my little brush. Just a, a purple to it, just to give it kind of a, it's a lavendery gray to start with. So I just added a touch, and then we'll bring it more towards a purple. So having a purple there. And so let's start out with this little top knot thingy. Oh, wait, before. Also, I got to go back to the brown and do his ears. But let's go ahead and do his, his little gray top knot. Since we already got the grays out and ready to go. And then I'll go back and do his ears. My dry everywhere. Because I'm really notorious for putting my, my hand. a lot more water in there because that's way darker than I want it. I wanted him a lot 
lighter than that. I had too much paint on there. Then I took a lot of it off. Just a touch of the purple down at these tips. Don't be afraid to turn your your paper around. Put some water in there. There's just starting to get a little purple at the edges. So then I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more and then I can add some more. And it gave me the base gray. because it's easier to pull the color towards you than to push it away from you. Add color on that tip. Really will rinse out the color out to where I'm now just basically water. So I put a base down, dried it, and then I added some more color on it into those tips and then pulled it out with just a little bit of water. So it gives a you know, the edgy is purple. I'm dying to see everybody's doing what other colors people are doing. So I'm super looking forward to that part. my gray. I had it way too dark. Okay, so I'm going to put a base of gray down. And just a soft gray. This is weird having a doing this and having a constant constantly chatting while I'm doing it usually usually I'm so absorbed in this I'm quiet so <laughs> it feels so different to be talking <laughs> Try to keep that edge from drying out, keeping paint on there. Sometimes 
in those areas like that you gotta move kind of quick now we'll use some of the, the purple color to add so I just added just you know your basic gray so now I can go back whoops to add the purple in um, and I can also add some other definition of some of the purple as well. Let me try it just a hair. I don't want it bone dry, but just get a little bit drier so it's not wet, wet. Come down. And again, I'm pulling it towards me rather than pushing it away from me. So. And if the purple is a little brighter than you want, to dull it down, add a little bit of yellow tone to it. Maybe we'll do a color class using watercolors. We did one with acrylics one time. Maybe we'll do it with some, something with uh, some watercolors in the future. So I've added some purple. Just down inside that tip of color. Right there, right, this little guy here. here. Put mainly just paint down in the tip. And then rinse my brush out and go with this water. Pull it up further. Maybe with this, we can start pulling just some threads of it, kind of for want of a better term, because it is a mane. It's very tips, just adding some color down in there. The biggest thing is just kind of play and see what happens. I mean, that's how I do 99% of everything that I do. It's just play with it a little, see what happens. If you don't like it, you know, there's always paper towels. You can always add water to it, mush it together a little bit. See how we're just adding a little bit of definition with some feathering lines. I'm just trying to get, I get the edges first and then I'll go back and in and add some more of those.
So I'm gonna dry that a little bit. Add a little more definition to it. I like his purple mane. Who was it? Jane suggested that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Thank you, Pam. Add some dark there for that little kind of bunch. That one. can always go in and add more color in these ends. We don't have to. It's harder to take it away. So now I'm going to take and add, I think I want to add just a little bit of the blue to the purple, just barely touching it to give it a more of a blue violet -y. Just add little dots of it until you get the kind of color that you want. I can always add more. See, then I'm getting a little bit of a bluey violet kind of color. And I kind of like the idea of that for just some darkening in some zones. I mean, this isn't exactly coming out exactly how I wanted it, but it's coming out okay. There's some of that. Also fets it to death without a whole lot of effort. So that's about as fetzing as much as I want to do on that. <laughs> Also, the other thing that happens when you're doing this watercolor stuff is you tend to get super focused in really tight. And sometimes you gotta step back and look at it from a little bit more of a distance and then go from there. This went a little bit more purple than I had planned, but that's okay. A 
give it a dry. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of this bluish tone down here at the end. There. And stop. When you think you're starting to fuss too much, stop. Okay? <laughs> so I'm pleased with how his mane came out. Now we gotta do his tail. And since I had the blue in that one, I'm just gonna do a new purple spot over here because I did it straight purple so I didn't have to think too much so then I didn't have to uh, remember how I mixed it so oh that's right I did a gray didn't I let's do the gray Oh, we can have that little purple in there, it's okay. Okay, so I don't want this to totally mush with the other parts of his tail, so I'm going to dry that one. We're gonna get probably his tail done and then we'll I think we'll do the saddle in the next class. And I did I'll have a touch of the purple. Just a little squidging in there. If you do these back sections of his tail a little bit darker gray, give some more definition. Try that. I just had water on my brush and it was getting a little weird there, so I blended it a little bit.
Maybe add a little, a little purple to it. Pull this back. Oh, I have to tell you guys a funny story. When uh, we brought Tigger home from the vet, he had a cone on so that he didn't lick where his his uh, cuts and stuff were. And uh, Salem, our uh, newest cat, we call him the kitten still, but he's a year old now. <laughs> um, but he, uh, he took one look at Tigger with that cone on, and he was puffed himself he he turns into a pom-pom when he's upset he just puffed every little part of himself up and was hissing he did not know quite what the problem but he was ready to attack he was ready to just do take whatever that was that was on his brother and get that thing off of him he was ready to fight it so it was pretty funny but he just looked like this little black puffball because he just makes himself about twice the size of normal and he's a tiny cat but he just turned himself into a l black pom-pom to uh and he was gonna he was gonna t help take care of his bro god it was so funny all right so there's his tail's base color on there and we'll add some of that For those of you who are also doing the horse, um, I'd love for even if you know it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not need to be perfect. Um, I would just love to see um, what you guys do with it, or if you do something else with the watercolors. I would love to see it. I, I would say that's the one thing that I wish people did more of over on Paper Doodles is they, show, they, they showed more of what they do. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to do some purple on this back edge, add some water, blend it in. My blue violet has dried a little bit right here. It's fine. Just add some water to it.
And you can also do these. You don't have to do them feathery the way I'm doing them. You could totally do them um, very blended if you wanted to, much like we did the horse body. I just wanted to do it a little bit different look. All right, so I'm going to add some more purple. Add some of the blue. Too much blue. <laughs> Add more purple. There we go. Let's put the color on. Way too much of my brush right now. Part that's the furthest back, making it the darkest. Blend it just a hair. Go outside the lines, don't get feel afraid to <laughs> add some. Make it look intentional. This purple, oh, I gotta dry it or I'm gonna bleed. Too dark. Blend it out. There's his tail. And that violetty and colors, and then we'll do into the, the more the aqua turquoisey greens on his um on his saddle. And might maybe I'll bring in some metallic on his little tassels. So I think um time wise we're at a good stopping point. So I'm thinking probably Wednesday. Um, do people want a daytime or a Wednesday evening? Um, 
So I'm thinking Wednesday, Friday, um, timing. Do we want like Wednesday or do we want Friday for um, the next class? I'm thinking, well, now that I'm thinking about it, because I have some other stuff that I'm wanting to do, if I can get it done in time for Wednesday, it won't be live, but it'll be a video that I'm going to be trying to do on Wednesdays. So I'm not going to talk about what it is yet because I'm not positive that I can get it done by then. So I'm wondering if we want to do this on Friday. Friday? Yeah, let's do a Friday. Um, so Friday evening. So we're going to leave this right where he is right now and we will then come back and do his um, his uh, saddle and his little top knot thing we can then do his um, his pole with the ribbons on it in the background we probably should be able to get all that done um, for the most part on Friday well then we can also be adding some detailing and stuff with um, our pens um, and that sort of thing and uh, Go from there. Does anybody have any question? Thanks for catching that one, Joy. I ended up not using my palette. And I'm just going to leave these to let them dry and then because I uh, so I keep my same colors. Um, yeah, he's got kind of a vibrant tail, but kind of gives some depth by having some darker ones. Not exactly what I was planning, but it worked out. So I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, I was planning on a much lighter tail, but it's all good. Thank you, uh, as always. Lois, I appreciate you coming in. I know this is getting late for you. And as always, Joy, I don't know what i do without you. Um, always greatly appreciate it. And also, thank you to all of you who are uh, who have joined me today. And uh, we are going to uh, continue this one. I am... I personally had a, had a fun time and I hope everybody else is as well. We will be getting back to doing um, some of my uh, my 3D projects. Um, those aren't forgotten. This is just a great way to kind of dip my toes in um, and getting back to doing the live classes again and it's something a little bit different. So um, thank you to all of you for joining me here in my studio. Let me go ahead and switch cameras. and. Uh, Let's move some of this out of the way though so I can move my computer up closer. I always hate saying goodbye with my hands. So um, it's dark outside now, so I'm going to look like I'm in a <laughs> under the interrogation lights. So anyway, it was fun um, just kind of escaping the world for a couple hours doing this. Um, I do find that playing with the watercolor is um, very soothing um, for me personally so my biggest thing is if you haven't tried you know what I'm doing right now just um, grab some watercolors inexpensive you can get the little cheaper ones um, and and some inexpensive paper and just kind of play and kind of get a feel for what what a little bit of paint a little bit of water can do um, and you might amaze yourself and you may find um, a new love so um, I do have the horse this first horse available uh, for just a couple dollars um, for the base drawings um, that you can use over and over and over again all you want um, do it in different colors that sort of thing um, so you can uh, get that on my website at lauradenisondesigns.com I will be putting up some other ones as well um, as I get them done but um, anyway it was fun getting to see all of you um, I do ask that everybody do your best to stay safe please 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 wear a mask it helps not only yourself but it helps those around you and let's get this all under control by working together so uh, anyway 
thanks for coming and playing and we will see you then um, on Friday if not before bye for now <laughs>